Hi, Mark Phillips here. Welcome to another edition of Swallow This. Of course, with me is Carol, Carol with an E. She's my co-host. She won't say too much, but she adds valuable insight in her own way. Today's episode is about how to open a bottle of sparkling wine or champagne. So there's some tricks to it. There's some proper etiquette here. So here we have a bottle of sparkling wine. Perfect, and it's ice cold. Probably a little bit too cold, but that'll be okay. So when you open a bottle of sparkling wine, there's always a tab, or usually there's a tab right here that you can just pull to get the foil off the top. And this one cooperated very nicely. There we go. Now here's where the trick comes in. Once you undo the cage here, you have to watch out because if you've had enough sparkling wine, open champagne, whatever in your life, you'll know that, that cork can fly out on its own. Just, you know, there's, who knows? So this cage holds this cork on. Now I may be able to remove this cage and the cork won't pop out, sure. But when it does, you know, it really flies out fast. In fact, Carol, you have that story. That's right, in a car, you were I with some friends, you didn't know very well, say acquaintances, and they were opening a bottle of sparkling wine in the car, yeah, and cracked the windshield. The cork took off and cracked the windshield. The cork from a, yeah. Now, I don't know why a bottle of sparkling wine was being opened in the car, yeah, but she said she had nothing to do with that. But the cork can do some damage. In fact, a cork flying out of a bottle of sparkling wine went to the eye of the guy that invented the intermittent windshield wiper. He just died not too long ago. He fought his whole life to get the royalties from that, and it, I don't know if he ever did. Royalties, uh, money, whatever it is from that. Anyway, so once you undo this cage, you don't want to take your hand off the top of the bottle. Once this cage is loose, the cork could fly, so don't do it. So, hey, here's a little trivia right here. How many turns does it take to unscrew the cage? Six. All bottles, sparkling wine or champagne, six turns. Good trivia thing. So I'm going to undo the cage so the cage doesn't come off the cork. The cage always stays on and you open the bottle with the cage still on. All right? One, two, three, four, five, six. Perfecto. And I loosen the cage and here we're ready to go now. Now, you're paying for the bubbles in this. And it's fun when you're at a celebration or something to shake the bottle up and pop it and spray everyone. You know, I'm all for that. But if you want to actually enjoy most of the wine that's in here, uh, you don't want to shake it up, obviously. And you want to make the, as little sound as possible when opening the bottle. The more pop there is, the more carbonation you lose from the sparkling wine. So, in fact, they say... A properly open bottle of champagne should make a sound of a satisfied woman. Well, we have one right here. She'll tell us if it's true. So the way it works is you want to turn the bottle at a 45 degree angle and you turn the bottle, not the cork. You could turn the cork, but if you turn the cork, you'd have to remove your hand from the cork to regrip it again, and that'd be bad because the cork could fly. So I'm gonna turn the bottle. Uh-oh, I already feel the cork starting to come out. This is a very happy bottle right here. Oh, it's a happy one, all right. So I keep turning it. Oh, and as soon as it's right near the end, you can feel the pressure going. It's getting there. You just wanna kinda of tilt the cork, and it should make a nice, a, a barely a sound. Let's see how I do. Wait, wow, that was beautiful. That was almost perfect. That was the sound, it wasn't? Well, actually the same is the sound of a satisfied woman. It means like a sigh. Oh, I'm satisfied. Oh. And that was pretty close. I think that, oh. I think it was pretty close. So that's pretty good same. Anyway, some other time we'll show you how to make a little animals and chairs out of the little top to this. It's kind of fun. 
So that was a perfectly open bottle of sparkling wine. I'm so proud of myself. Carol, I was going to have her do it, but her hand, well. So now, how do you pour it? We have it open, and oh, look at that beautiful glass. I love that glass. And it works well, because this is my glass, you know, the one I designed, but it works well for all types of wines, even sparkling wine or champagne. Yeah, I know you want a flute, but this is fine. You know, why go buy all the stuff? Different glasses, I don't understand it. So the way to pour sparkling wine, first of all, the proper way is, there's a dimple on the bottom of this bottle, all sparkling wine bottles, that came there, that was first put in there because it strengthens the bottle and it allows the bottle to hold up, even with all the pressure inside of there. There's a term for that in the wine, it's called a punt, like football, P-U-N-T. <laughs> How about that? So you put your thumb in the punt and your fingers here and you hold it and then you just tilt the wine and that's how it's done. Now it's going to foam up and when it foams up in a champagne flute because it's more narrow, you won't let it, it'll foam up a lot sometimes. So you let it foam up a little bit and then let it settle down and then top it off. So it's really a two step pour to properly pour champagne. And if you're pouring a whole bunch of people, you want to do one person at a time, I believe. So you don't pour the first pour, let it fizz up, and then pour the next person, let it fizz up. I think you let pour the first one, let it fizz up, and then top it off, and then move on to the next person. Just my belief. Oh, a little bit for me. But see this one, because it's a wider glass, the fizz isn't too much, and it doesn't go up so much. Here, Carol, she can have some too. Oh, and one other thing too, you never want to have the neck of the bottle hit the top of the glass. Oh, huge violation. With sparkling wine or any wine poured for you, or if you're pouring for someone else, the neck of the bottle should never hit the top of the glass. Now, this idea of pouring, putting your thumb in the punt, this is really only for champagne or sparkling wine, not for regular wine. Although some of those bottles do have a punt, that's not really what that's for. Here you go, Carol. Oh, boy, you love, we love, yeah. Oh, you sp no, you didn't. We love sparkling wine. So, one other thing, I have to finish this up pretty quickly because once I start drinking sparkling wine, I start burping. <laughs> I kind of like the feeling, but it's not very good for camera, on-camera action. So one other thing about the temperature of sparkling wine, I mentioned before, it's ice cold. <clears throat> Pardon me. See, it's already starting to happen. And that wasn't really a burp, but still, things happen. Um, proper serving temperature for sparkling wine is really in the high 40s. A refrigerator is 40 degrees. This is right out of the refrigerator, and it tastes nice. It's not a very, it's very inexpensive. Heck, this bottle is $5 a bottle. Five. Wow. And I like it. Mmm. -hmm. So maybe this one should be kept poured it pretty cold because cold masks the flavor. This is a pretty good flavor. Let me just show you. Well, I'll show, on the camera you'll see the label. Cristalino is the name of the wine from Spain. And like five bucks, really five, maybe six, but very inexpensive. It's my house spark, what's well, one of my house sparkling wines. I like another one from Spain too. I'll show you in a future episode. That's really the best, but this one I just happened to grab. Uh, so if it doesn't taste, you know, I think it's, this is good ice cold. But if you really look at the flavor of wine, you would never serve Dom Perignon or Cristal or even the regular champagnes like Vouve and Moet, you know, in the $40 range. It'd be a waste of money. <coughs> Pardon me, I don't know what got me here. Because if you sort of rather the refrigerator, that cold would mask the flavor of the champagne. And, you might as well be drinking $6 bottles of sparkling wine versus $40 bottles of champagne if you're going to serve them ice cold. It would be a complete waste. So let the champagne warm up for maybe eh, 20 minutes, 15 minutes before you have it. And you get, the, you get much more flavor out of the wine. So there you have it. How to open sparkling wine. See you later.